Welcome to Rowdy and Real with me, Sophie Shaw, hypnotherapist, Reiki master teacher, well-being coach, and slight loose cannon. I'll be sharing some life lessons and wisdom from the real world. If nothing else, it'll take your mind off your problems for a bit. And if we're really lucky, you might even hear something that helps you to make it better. So stick around for real talk, real growth, and some probable bad language. Let's dive in, shall we? Hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. Here we are again. My goodness, you're a glutton for punishment, aren't you? Thank you for coming back and listening to me again. Um, I would like you to answer me a question. One that, (laughs) even though I kind of know the answer, it still really frustrates me. Why do we resist the change that we actually want? It is so annoying. What's our problem? You know, we complain that things are not how we want them to be. (laughs) We're really good at complaining. I am anyway. Uh, You know, in your mind, you're thinking, I haven't got what I want. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not where I want to be in my career. My body is not how I want it to be. I haven't got enough money. I haven't got the relationship I want, Uh, you know. And then when an opportunity comes to make a change, like, you know, someone, really interesting walks into your life and offers you to go on a first date, you're like, eh, no, no, thank you. I'm a bit busy today. I'll, I'll get back to you. <laughs> it's so stupid. The universe is there busy serving up everything that you ask for, like some kind of super intelligent Labrador. And what are we doing? We're hiding in the closet. We're hoping it won't find us. I I don't really want a promotion today. It's too scary. Thank you. No, don't give me all that money. Go and give it to someone else. It's ridiculous. Why are we like this? I'm saying we, and you had better be nodding along because otherwise it's just me sitting in my closet going, oh, I'm an idiot. (laughs) Oh, dear. God love us, though, seriously. Well, look. Let me offer you some guidance about why we do this and why it's so important to stop doing it. Oh dear, I mean, God love us. It's not because we're idiots. I mean, mostly. (laughs) We just have minds and egos that like to keep us safe, no matter what, by sticking to what we already know. Okay, that's the mind's one and only job, in case you didn't know, is to keep you happy. That's literally all it cares about, is doing whatever it takes to keep you happy and safe. So it's not that your mind is, you know, against you or trying to sabotage you or trying to stop you from being successful. It's the opposite. It really wants you to be happy. It actually, here's the interesting thing, it doesn't actually care too much about success. It only cares about happiness. And while you think you might be more happy when you're more successful, your mind is like, yeah, but that that's different and it's weird and it's unknown. (laughs) So can we just stay here today, please? Yeah, that's good. Great. Comfortable. Happy. I know this. The mind likes what it already knows. Okay, so. God bless your mind. It is super incredible and brilliant and powerful, but it is also slightly like a six-year-old in charge of a jumbo jet. (laughs) You know, now six-year-olds are really good at playing video games and a lot of the jumbo jet is automated. So in actual fact, you're kind of functioning. You know, you're kind of getting on pretty well most of the time. But if there's any hint of a crisis like you know, a funny looking cloud or or a blinking engine light or something, then your six-year-old is going to panic. Your six-year-old mind will panic. It'll start hitting all the buttons. It will do anything to just get you flying straight and quiet like you normally do. Okay, your six-year-old is not the most amazing pilot or navigator. When it comes to change, your six-year-old is going to freak out. So in other words, if you want to make a change in your flight plan, it it becomes quite difficult. You know, your six-year-old mind is not really going to be open to a sudden trip to Bali on a whim. So 
that's why, even though you might want to make the change, and even though it might be something that would make you so happy, your mind slash ego resists it like mad. Which is really annoying. (laughs) So how do you bypass this? How do you put the six-year-old back in a passenger seat where they belong and let the adults fly the plane for a while? In other words, how do you make change happen when you know it's for your highest good? So I would say that in order to do this, two things need to be in place. The first is a strong desire for something different. And that desire needs to be stronger than the need to stay the same. All right, so some people might call this your why, your purpose, your goal, if you like. It needs to be fueled by strong desire and it needs to feel like something that is within your reach, something that is doable. And as you're navigating that change, it needs to be enjoyable enough to think about that it will keep you going when you hit turbulence because change is not always smooth. In fact, it's rarely smooth. It usually does shake you up a bit and make you feel weird and uncomfortable. And if you don't have a strong desire, a strong why, a strong reason for making the change, then your mind, your six-year-old mind ego is simply going to say, no, this is weird and uncomfortable and there's no good reason for it. So let's just carry on the way we were. Thank you very much. So whatever it is that you want to change up, really dig into the reasons why. And by the way, it needs to be a positive why. In other words, it needs to be something that carries you forward. Like I am looking forward to uh, getting the promotion at work or getting more money or finding the relationship I want or getting more healthy or sleeping better. And also ask yourself why those things will make you feel better. Maybe it's because you'll have more energy or you'll feel more successful or you'll feel better about yourself or, you know, whatever it is for you that makes that goal really delicious, really exciting and enjoyable to think about. That is a positive goal. That is a positive forward momentum. That's a positive why. What I'm saying is don't make it something like um, because I want to stop feeling so tired or I want to stop feeling so shit about myself. Um, these are these are not great motivators, okay? It's much more powerful to be motivated by enjoyment, excitement, anticipation than it is to be motivated by fear or discomfort. Those are not going to motivate you long term uh, because fear is exhausting. And if you're exhausted, change is doubly hard. Okay, so That's the first thing that needs to be in place, a really strong, enjoyable desire, a reason. And the second thing that needs to be in place, now, this is going to sound stupidly simple, but I promise you it's powerful, is willingness to change your mind. Okay? I I know that sounds really obvious, but bear in mind, you've got lots of different parts of your mind that are competing with one another. So you've got your six-year-old mind who really wants everything to stay the same. And you've got your cheerleader mind who's like, yeah, come on, six o'clock in the morning, we can totally go for that run. (laughs) You've probably got the rest of your mind going, have you lost your fucking mind? We are not going for a run at six o'clock in the morning. I'm not. You might. You go for it. If that's your thing, I applaud you and I applaud you from my bed, which is where I will be at six o'clock in the morning. I am not willing to change my mind about that. So that's not going to be a thing for me. But, you know, there you go. You see, that's my willingness is not there. If you want to make a change, absolutely make sure that the vast majority of your mind is on board and ready and willing to change your habits, change your thoughts change how you think about it, change how you feel about it, decide that it's possible, decide that you're willing, uh, and you will be. So those are your two really super powerful ingredients. Number one, the desire to make the change. Number two, the willingness to change your mind about it. Now, I would 
argue that there is a secret third ingredient that makes the whole process just so much quicker and easier. And that is support. Yes, you are awesome. I know. And you can do it by yourself. I absolutely know that you can. But why would you struggle? Like, why would you make it harder on yourself than it needs to be? Everybody needs support. I do. I love my supporters and I'd be lost without them. That doesn't mean that I'm not working on myself to become self-sufficient, resilient, uh, self-loving, all those things. It is an inside job. Like, I am the one in charge. But we all need support. You know, just wouldn't it be so much easier if you had someone showing you the way or cheering you on or keeping you on your path, some kind of accountability? You know, this is a really good reason to tell people what you're going for. And I know that that might make you go, Ugh, no, thank you very much. I'll just do this by myself. Nobody else needs to know. Ask yourself, why are you saying that? Now, if you're really, really honest, you're probably saying that so that if you fail, nobody will know, right? I know, I can see you thinking that. Well, you know, there's that willingness to change your mind part. That's where that ingredient really comes into play because you have to decide right now that this is something you're going for. You want this change to happen, you're willing to make it happen, and you're determined. So tell someone about it. Let them keep you accountable. Let them cheer you on. If you had a map reader, if you had somebody who knew the territory well, wouldn't that help? You know, someone who knew exactly the right thing to say to keep you from giving up when the going gets tough. You'd be much more likely to get where you're going, wouldn't you? So my love, you know, that's what I'm here for. Give me a call. Get in touch. Let me know how I can help you. I'm a good map reader. I mean not an actual map reader, as we've established, <laughs> but I can definitely help you navigate the ups and downs of your life. I can help keep you accountable. I can help nudge you back onto your path. And if not me, then make sure you're choosing someone, a buddy, a coach, a therapist, a group of people. Going for your goals in the company of other like-minded people makes you I'm making this statistic up. One million and two percent more likely to achieve them. That is definitely true. <laughs> I think it's true. All right, my darling, that's it. I hope that helps. I'm sending you lots and lots of love. Until next time, you take care. Big squeeze. Mwah. Thanks for listening to Rowdy and Real with me, Sophie Shaw. This podcast is intended for educational and vaguely entertaining purposes and is not a replacement for counselling, psychotherapy or coaching. Please take responsibility for your mental health and ask for the help you need. You're fabulous and you deserve to be happy. If you'd like to stay in touch, then please visit norwichtherapy.co.uk and join the mailing list to receive a gorgeous free meditation straight into your inbox. And if you'd like to chat with me about your stuff, then please book yourself a free 30-minute call at sophieshaw.as.me forward slash free call. And we'll start making a plan for your happiness. Bye.